We have our panel joining us in just a moment, but we'll introduce it with this. What started as a spat between notorious union leader John Setka and an old nemesis from the now-abolished construction industry watchdog has blown up further today. Mr Sepka of the Victorian CFMEU is most unhappy that the former Australian Building and Construction Commission Chief Steve McBurney has found himself a new job at the AFL in charge of the code's umpires there. There's even been a suggestion that the CFMEU could slow construction on AFL stadiums in retaliation. Well, federal commentary has quickly followed today. Well, look, there's probably a bit of a, a, a grudge, but I mean, why go to the AFL? I mean, um, you know, the AFL is a sport. I mean, a lot of our members follow the AFL. Uh, we've had, uh, we've got a lot of players that are premiership players that are members of the CFMEU. Um, and and look, and, and the umpires. I mean, I think the umpires have got their jobs already hard enough uh, as it is to let alone have be getting orders off someone like McBurney, who, who, who's pretty undemocratic who actually belongs in North Korea, to be quite honest. He'd be right at home over there. John Setka is out there threatening to delay major sporting infrastructure projects if the AFL don't sack their head of umpiring, Stephen McBurney. Bullying, intimidation and threatening behaviour. At the moment, there's a, a war of words that's running through the media. When you say, gone too far in terms of what they've done, things haven't been done. But I would also say, anyone making any threat to Australian sport, it's not the way to win over the Australian people. I find the whole thing very odd. Can I just take all the Football Australia representatives away if that's OK? Just if everyone comes over this way. I think we're done, I'm sorry. Yes, so that was the team surrounding the sports minister, Annika Wells, not buying in today. And John Setka himself, well, he made those comments from Melbourne yesterday. Right, with that established, let's bring in our political panel and Labor Senator. Nita Green is with us from Cairns today. Welcome back, Nita. And Liberal MP Jenny Wares in Sydney. Welcome to you too, Jenny. Good to have Hello, you Greg. both with us. We won't spend too much time on John Setka because I think there might be a bit of bluster built into this, Nita. But to answer the demand or the call of, of uh, the coalition, why not condemn him? It's a bit rich, isn't it, to carry on? an old blue with someone from, from yesteryear in a previous capacity? Well, I mean, I agree with Tony Burke that um, uh, sort of threatening sport in Australia is really difficult territory for anyone. Um, Queensland is a rugby league mad, and I think if anyone tried to do that up here, they'd be treated with the same sort of um, disdain. Look, this this person is not a member of the Labor Party. He is There is a war of words through the media. But what I'd say is that when it comes to workplaces in Australia, our government's actually been focused and today very focused on the jobs that we're creating in workplaces um, and making those jobs as secure as possible and as safe as possible. Uh, I think you've seen members of the coalition talking about this today because they don't want to talk about the labour force figures that have come out, um, half a million jobs created under our government. That's something that we're focused on and we're not focused on these um, these spats going through the media from John Sector. We're actually focused on making sure that Australians have really good, secure jobs. All right, Jenny, we're neat uh, slipping in today's or last month's uh, unemployment data, which is pretty much bang on forecast, isn't it? But, but to the John Setker question, Jenny, there is more noise here, isn't there, than, than actual threat or heat around uh, stadium construction? Well, I, well, John Setka said to the... He has blatantly threatened the AFL and has said that he will delay the construction times um, on key stadiums that are watched by, you know, hundreds and hundreds of Australians um, that love their AFL. This is bullying and intimidatory behaviour at its absolute worst. It is him trying to settle old scores and it has come... Um, as a direct result, Greg, from the Labor Party's industrial relations policy. The Labor Party, one of the first acts of government was to roll back the 
ABCC and to empower unions such as the CFMEU, which I should say also donates around about $4.3 million right. every year to the Labor Party. Okay. So if okay. Labor ministers are silent, maybe there is a link there. All right. I suppose by that argument, Jenny Ware, you're suggesting that had the ABCC uh, not been abolished, then uh, McBurney may not have been looking for a job. But anyway, I, as I said, I want to move on. That was just a quick one to get the ice broken today. Let's go to something where, look, there might be some emerging consensus between both of you around age verification on social media. At least I draw that conclusion from the comments today of people. Peter Dutton and Anthony Albanese. Nita, is there? Well, on uh, Safety for Kids Online, um, certainly our government um, does support um, an age limit on um, when kids can access online material. I think the evidence is there that there needs to be some um, action on this. Uh, and we know that kids are susceptible. I've, I've got a young daughter and I'm, I'm already thinking about how she's going to start engaging uh, with social media and online content and w at what age it is appropriate for her to do so. Um, so this has been something that's been talked about for a little while now and that's why under our government we actually um, got a report from the eSafety Commissioner to look into age verification and what would be involved in that um, and essentially there's really two questions what should be the mandated age what's the limit um, for access to social media and how would you actually do that in a way that wouldn't create some sort of loopholes by mm. these social media companies um, because there are those two questions the eSafety Commissioner made a recommendation to our government that we should fund a trial um, of age verification technology and we made sure there was 6.5 million dollars in the budget to do exactly that so it's great that Peter Dutton and, um, and uh, his, uh, his coalition have come on board with this idea, um, but we've already started the work to make sure that we can get this right, yep. we can get the right technology in place and we get the right age limit in place so that parents know that when their kids are accessing social media, they're doing it in a safe way. Yeah, double barrel question for you, Jenny. One, how strongly this comes through to you as an elected representative. But the second part, Jenny, where is if indeed the Albanese government moves within the life of this parliament, would you back them? You'd have to, wouldn't you? Um, Greg, to answer your first question, I am almost daily I'm contacted by parents who are extremely worried about the material that their teenagers and young people have access to. The virtual world must reflect the real world. There is no way that we would allow or condone um, children walking into a room and opening a pornographic magazine or having access to that pornographic material. The same rules need to apply online. And I think that Peter's announcement has come on the back of seeing that social media platforms have really let Australian families down. Australian parents are struggling with this. I have teenage sons and it is it has been a source of um, extreme concern for me both as a parent but also as an elected representative listening to my constituents mm. about this issue. I'm glad to see that there, there does appear that there will be some sort of um, bipartisan approach. I think that this is this is an issue where um, all of us across the across the um, chamber feel very strongly about this. It is something that we need to address as elected parliamentarians. And what we have found is that the social media platforms have been far too slow mm. to address this so far. So we will then put some compulsion, the coalition will put some compulsion behind this to ensure that social media platforms do conform with age verification laws. Uh, and what about process and timing here? Nita, noting what you said about the pilot or the trial, is it conceivable that legislation would come in this current parliament? Well, look, I think it'll be based on the trial and that trial is um, now funded, it'll get started. Um, we've seen similar pilots um, take place um, around the world in lots of different markets. So we're also drawing on the information that we've got from around the world. Um, but we need to look at how these laws are operating in an Australia context and what technology we can put in place. So, um, of course, uh, the legislative process can be as fast or as quick sometimes as, as um, governments want them to be. Um, we um, have some legislation 
around banning deep fake material that we're currently bringing through Parliament. Uh, and hopefully, if we get the support of um, Jenny and her colleagues on things like that, we can progress legislation really quickly. Yeah. Um, of course, the government, um, you know, works with uh, particularly the Senate to, to get things through. But I think what we're going to see from this trial is that this is not as um, simple as Peter Dutton putting out a press release. It's actually quite a complicated um, uh, piece of infrastructure and legislative reform that's required. And so we need to get it right so that we can protect our kids and keep them safe. All right. That's come through loud and clear from experts in the field that we've spoken to today and over a few weeks now, I think, on this issue. Uh, Jenny, I'll introduce this question to you before taking it over to Nita around political donations with one eye on what the South Australian Premier is doing. You'd be all too well aware that elections come around very, very quickly and they are costly. A lot of government time, opposition time too, I suppose, can be spent rattling the tin to raise funding for our democratic campaigns. With that in mind, Jenny Ware, why not move to a publicly funded model as is being proposed in South Australia? Well, the, the South Australian model, from the announcement that was made that I saw from the Premier today, he was proposing bans on specific organisations from donating to, to um, political parties or political candidates. I think that the real issue around political donations is that political donations have been seen for a long time, and particularly by the courts, as being a form of political campaigning or a form of political communication. And... I don't think that just um, bringing in whole-scale bans is actually the way to go. What we need with political donations law and around electoral funding laws is transparency. Australians need to know who is donating to their elected representative um, and they need to know whether, this do whether these donations are from Mr and, Mr. and Mrs yeah. um, Joe Smith in the suburbs, whether it's big corporate, whether it's unions and the, the way in which those donations are being made. So I think the two issues with transparency are, number one, we could, for example, shorten the time frame between the time in which a donation is made and the time it is disclosed. Mm -hmm. Currently 12 months, that could come down to, say, one month. That would help with transparency. Transparency, um, And the second thing is to ensure that the definition of political donations clearly encapsulates membership fees, um, levies, union affiliates, right. membership fees and things of that nature okay. so that there is clear transparency for Australians. Understood. Greg. And I think some of that work is unresolved with a draft bill rattling around for negotiation uh, between senators at present. Nita, to the South Australian question, are you attracted to to what your uh, colleagues are doing down there with, as I said, the full public funding model? Well, I think the work that we've been doing for federally has been about transparency and accountability. Um, I think federally um, we haven't been as advanced in um, under previous governments in transparency and accountability of who is donating and when they are donating. Uh, we've had some um, improvements to the laws here in Queensland, for example, on those types of things when declarations are made. And so that's, I think, the work that is being done now by the Special Minister of State, um, Senator Don Farrell, uh, a South Australian himself, but he's mm -hmm. working really hard on getting that electoral reform. Uh, electoral reform is significant because it does impact on constitutional rights when it comes to political communication. So this is something that we are working across the parliament to get a consensus uh, to make sure that the laws we bring forward um, get that balance of allowing people to participate in the political system, but also making sure that um, we do have that transparency and accountability. Um, those The measures we have in place um, you know, allow us to see that, for example, the LNP still accept donations from tobacco companies, Greg. Right. Um, but we want to make sure that we get that information in real time if we can. All right. Touche, yes. And, to the, to the union also, donation, Greg, there's the tobacco donation. I don't want right. that argument to erupt, Thank though, Jenny. Thank I'm you, gonna, Greg. <laughs> I'm going to wrap both of you up there, uh, noting that this is complex work also and unresolved by the Parliament as we speak. Well, thank you both, Jenny Ware, Nita Green. As always, we'll get you back Thank soon. you, Greg. Thank you, Nita. Thanks, Greg.